Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. One of the things that Rotary does and does not do well, and that is talk about what we do in community life. And so with us today, we have a group that actually has been working on bringing that awareness to the communities. With me, I have Randy Strong and Nick Frankel. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. We are talking now about one of the uh, great innovative ideas you had, and that is uh, the magazine, Rotary Serving Our Community. Rotary is making a difference. So tell us a little bit, first of all, before we get into this, a little bit about yourself there, Randy. Oh, okay. Uh, I have been a marketing consultant for the last 35 years. Uh, on a personal level, I was, uh, have been married for 42 years, have three kids, four grandchildren. Uh, everybody lives locally, so I get to see them all the time, and I'm a happy guy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> How about you, Nick? I retired recently from a career in information technology and international telecommunications which gave me the opportunity to become a full-time volunteer in my community and it, finding it very, very rewarding. <laughs> Great. Randy, with you then, tell us a little bit about how you got into Rotary. Well, it's interesting. I uh, was invited to uh, two or three different clubs over the course of about three years and the timing was just never right. But a real good friend of mine asked me to join finally. He said, in fact, you have no choice. You need to do this. <laughs> and I'm really glad that he did because it was 24 years ago and I found that it's a Rotary family. I couldn't believe how it transformed my life. So it's very exciting for me. That is great. How about you there, Nick? It's interesting. I had just started a new job in my local community after commuting to El Segundo for many, many years. And my wife, who sat on about a dozen nonprofit boards in the community dealing with seniors, said, Nick, you have to join Rotary because every time we need something, we call Rotary and they're always there. So I met my sponsor through a networking group, came to the Rotary meeting, fell in love with it, and been there since 2003. Wow. Now you talk about retiring from your business, but um, also you recently retired governor. Yes. <laughs> I was had the privilege and the honor to be governor of District 5240 in Rotary year 2016. 17 and you know a lot of the things that I learned by visiting the clubs are what make this magazine so special our ability to get our message of what we do out into the community very good let's jump into some of the pictures um, rather than keeping everybody uh, waiting for that one there's a few uh, pictures that we're going to show first of all is a, a picture showing I believe it's uh, Mike Murphy it is with the Thousand Oaks Club. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that picture. Well, uh, actually, this is kind of interesting. This was uh, a particular award that they received there, and I can't, I actually don't remember what that award was, but the Thousand Oaks Club is uh, one of the most productive and biggest clubs in the entire district. And um, this is the year that Mike was president, and there was really a lot of, of, of good stuff that they were able to put back into Rotary and help other clubs. And I just felt like we, we needed to focus on these guys here. I think this was a lot of their board members. That was a good one. Nick, you could probably do on this and this is your, your president, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that was, um, they got the... Um, That's the Best Large Club best Award. Best Large Club Award, correct? Yeah, Best Large okay. Club, which means the clubs in our district that are 72 members or more. Okay. Uh, and it means that they excelled in all of the seven or eight categories that we use to evaluate. Now, regionally wise, by the way, I should point out, both of you are in the same club, right? Westlake Village? Yes. Sunrise. Sunrise, yes. Right. And how many clubs are there in that area? There are five clubs in the Group 4 area. So okay. it's Conejo Valley, Newbury Park, Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, which meets at noontime, and okay. Westlake Village Sunrise. Got it. Okay. Perfect. The next picture we have uh, shows a band. Uh. Yeah, this is actually our club's event, the California Jazz and Wine Fest, which is a fundraiser that we've been doing for the last six years. And it benefited uh, Boys and Girls Club. Mm. Okay. Um, one specific Boys and Girls Club or the regional? It is the Conejo, Conejo Valley Agora, I believe. Okay, good, good. And then the next picture is a Sunrise Rotary Golf Tournament. Yes, uh, that is actually something we've been doing for over 30 years. And this particular fundraiser is for the YMCA, the Greater Canal Valley YMCA. Great. Um, you mind sharing a little bit about the proceeds, how much came in? Uh, you know, 
uh, like I say, it's been over 30 years, yeah. and it has it has varied for as little as 10,000, as much as over 30,000 mm -hmm. that has come in. I believe the most recent year was about 10, and okay. it oh, uh, and was mostly earmarked to the YMCA. Nice, nice. Okay. And then the next picture we have um, Thousand Oaks Street Fair. Nick, tell us a little bit about this one. This has been an event that Thousand Oaks holds every year for many, many years. They have vendors come from all over, both people who are selling their wares, nonprofits who want to make themselves known to the community. The city is kind enough to shut down two city blocks, and it is an amazing event. You can get almost anything you want there. If you want to do early Christmas shopping, it was a great time to do so. And it's a tremendous way to introduce Rotary to the community. Great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, community Street Festival. Yeah, so, so this one is actually, it has similarities to the street fair that Thousand Oaks does. This one's done by the Westlake Village Noontime Club. Mm -hmm. And it is smaller, but it, it brings up an interesting point because the two street fairs together are attended by a tremendous amount of people. It is said that up to 16 to 17,000 people go to the Thousand Oaks one alone. Mm -hmm. And this is a great example of what happens out there in the community that people attend and they don't realize that it's Rotary that's putting it on True. and that they're, they're taking 100% of the proceeds and putting it right back into the community and other charitable uh, organizations that are out there. Very good. Um, next picture you have is a picture of a Okay, you're gonna have to help this me out is, on this, this one. This is a yeah. This is a feed the needy. Now, this ah, is something okay. that that our club actually does about five or six times a year. It usually works out to be the fifth Tuesday of every of every month. That if the fifth Tuesday comes up, so uh, we do that. Um, have been doing that for I would say at least ten years, and uh, we will see anywhere from. 100 to 200 people mm. that are coming for food wow. at that particular function. It's held at the Calvary Community Church. Nice, nice. Yeah. And the funds from that mostly come from the club or from your fundraisers? It's really, it's really us as club members. Nice. We cook the meals. Okay. Or we'll buy the meals and we'll bring them there and we serve the meals. Very good. Yeah. That's a great project. Yeah, we love it. it. Is. So the next picture uh, we have up here actually looks like uh, your website. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so, so the, the magazine needed to have a digital presence. So we created joinrotarynow.org. And this is what it looks like when you go to this site. It's not just a, a digital copy of the magazine. It is more set up similarly to a blog so that you can have all the same information from the magazine, but you can also have an about us and a small video and things that will really inform the community about the Rotary Clubs and what they're doing in that community. Great, great idea. Um, next picture is a picture, I believe, one of the pages and one of the uh, articles specific that you were mm -hmm. highlighting. Yeah, it actually is, and again, this is, this is another uh, web page actually on the joinrotarynow.org site. Okay. And um, this is just what it, this particular article is our feature in this issue's magazine. Uh, okay. Okay. Good, good. And there's the uh, address in case anybody wants to take a look at that. Right. Very nice. Right. Very nice. Next picture we have is, uh, looks like a holiday party here. Well, it is. This, the Newbury Park Club does this. Uh, this is actually at Mary Health of the Sick, uh -huh. uh, which is a nursing facility. And um, every year they bring Christmas to the residents at nice. this facility. Nice. Yeah. So it's good. One thing I, I see that the... Um, magazine did was it brought the clubs together so you could actually have kind of a, a shared presence at, in this respect. Right, right. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, the Oak Heart Country Music Festival. Tell me about that one. Well, this is, this, is, this is an awesome event. It actually has been going on for six years and it's the Westlake Village Noon Club that does this one. And it is growing and, and doing tremendous things for their ability to give funds back into the community. Uh, it is just what it says here, country music. It's an outdoor festival. And um, they actually partner with Borderline Bar and Grill uh, mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a great partnership for them to do that. And I know that other clubs get involved to help them with this. Good, good. Um, where's the location of that event? This location is at Conejo Creek 
Park oh, South, okay. which is the soccer fields, which is where Canal Valley Days is, right, right, right around that same area. Great place, good venue. Yeah. Next picture we have, uh, we're talking about the Dreamcatcher Playground. Uh, again, one outstanding program. Tell us a little bit about that one, since it's the feature. Yeah, it, it is the feature. And the reason that we chose this particular one for the feature is that all five clubs were very active in this, in giving money and being involved in the process. There's a Newbury Park Rotarian by the name of Ron Block who had this whole concept in mind of, of transforming this park so that it would be uh, friendly for mostly autistic children to be able to come together. And, and more than anything, I can understand this very well because I have an autistic grandchild and I'm learning more and more about that. And to be able to have something that is, is created just for their needs and their issues is just phenomenal. And I'm, my understanding is this is one of the, the best ones possibly in Southern California. Uh, from what I heard, it's exactly right. And it's beyond Southern California. Here's one of the best ones out there. Yeah. So, good job. Uh, Nick, uh, how are you involved with that playground? I know that had to take a lot of effort, not only by one club, not one group, but a well, district. Well, it was a partnership between Rotary and the Caneo Rec and Park District. Uh, it was spearheaded by one, but as you said, it took many, many Rotarians. It included grants and to, included gifts from the Rotary clubs. It was a half a million dollar project that has been completed ahead of schedule, and they have raised to date almost six hundred thousand dollars to continue support of the park. So the other hundred thousand is that going to be going into that an will endowment? be going into the park in terms of either equipment or maintenance. Good, very good. Okay, uh, the next picture we have actually is uh, the cover of the magazine you brought with us. Yes, so, it is. So thank you for that one. Yes. The next uh, picture we have shows um, the Thousand Oaks Club contributing to... Yeah, this is, this is actually the Special Olympics, oh, which okay. is a very big charity that, that they get behind year after year. And I thought it would be important for us to be able to show this in the magazine and online because there again, the community doesn't quite understand that these are the things that Rotary does. So there's a lot of hands-on, getting involved in things, doing the fundraisers, but the fun part many times is right here, handing out the checks. Right, right, and that's an annual event then, is that correct? Uh, annually, they actually do um, uh, give a check to this organization. Nice, yes. nice, because I remember, uh, that's Rayford Johnson, correct? Uh, gold medalist. Yes, yes, it is, yes it is. <laughs> yeah, I've seen him at a number of events that they held yep. there. He is an honorary member of Thousand Oaks. Great, good to hear, great guy. Yeah. Next one, uh, we have a picture of the 41st annual chili cook-off. Tell me a little bit about that one. That looks like a lot of fun there. Well, it is. And, and in fact, uh, one of the things that I thought was important to show here is that both the Thousand Oaks Club and Canal Valley Club are involved in this one mm -hmm. because it's the Chili Cook-Off and the Classic Car Show. Ah. So the Canejo Club brings the car show into the mix on this one. But the Chili Cook-Off is huge. They have an enormous amount of attendance at this, and it's been going on for a long time. There again, and I, I can't remember the numbers, but it seems to me that the Thousand Oaks Club has always earned somewhere fifty, sixty, seventy thousand wow. wow. dollars on on this event. Uh, they get big sponsors, and there's uh, an attendance fee to come in. Uh, but there's probably I don't know about thirty or forty different kinds of chili at least mm -hmm. that come in, and people can taste and 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 they earn money that way as well. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, one quick question on this one: Is that one of those uh, nationally certified chili cook-offs? Do you know? Um, I believe it is. I believe it is. That was my understanding when I got started. That's what Makes they wanted sense. to do. Makes sense that it would be. Yeah. Uh, we have um, that you brought us uh, about a minute and a half video. Let's take a look at that and show the audience what this is all about. So with that, take a look at that. Great. I uh, hope you enjoyed that part of it. Now let's come back to the um, actual magazine. I'd like to try and get into the meat of this one here because okay. it's such a great idea you've come up with. Tell me a little bit about the idea. Well, you know, I'm, I'm so excited about this magazine because I, I really, it's something that, that hit me as an idea many years ago. And it was something I wanted to bring to Rotary, but the timing was never quite right to do that. A little over a year ago, my club president came to me and said, I need you to come up with some kind of an idea so that we can have better outreach into the community. And I thought, okay, there couldn't be better timing than that. So I brought this to him. He loved it. And I said, but here's the thing. 
this isn't something that I feel would work best just for our club. I think that it's something that needs to be for our Conejo Valley community and let's get all the other clubs into it as well. And he said, great, let's in introduce it to them and see what they think. And uh, brought it to each and every one of the club presidents. They loved it. Uh, it. Took a while to put all the logistics together, but everybody got excited about it. They all submitted information to us and got the photos and the stories and the basic background of each club. And a magazine was born. Hmm. How successful do you think that has been? Uh, do you see it out there? Do you see community getting more awareness of what Rotary is doing? Well, I, I definitely do. Uh, we printed 5,000 of these, and, and essentially we take half of that, 2,500 to the clubs, and they all hand them out because we see it as a membership recruitment tool. That's okay. a really big piece of all of this. But the other 2,500 was actually hand uh, distributed by our local Rotaract club members. Mm. They went out there and they found about 120 locations, high traffic, uh, restaurants, hotels, retail, and things like that. Dropped off stacks of all these magazines. So we know it's already getting out there and we've had a few people in the community actually come up to us and say, oh, I saw the magazine out there. It's great. It's out there. And that was the whole idea. So it is a quarterly magazine, correct? Actually, we're looking at it being semi-annual. Okay. okay semi-annual, right. yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, it's a great idea. Nick, I want your input on this. Well, how, how do we create more models of this? Well, let, let me just say okay. that, you know, as, a dis as you know, as a district governor, one of the things you get to do is visit all 74 clubs in the district. And what I learned is the amazing job that Rotarians do in their community that people don't know that Rotary does. So the opportunity to get this magazine at the Chamber of Commerce and doctor's offices and places where people come together in the local community and to learn that all these things that they enjoy and all these benefits to the community come from an organization called Rotary, I think is going to help our presence in the community, hopefully bring membership, but hopefully, most importantly, it will bring awareness of what Rotarians contribute to the community. So next time when they see the senior center or they go to the street fair or they see, uh, as happened last week, 350 Thanksgiving dinners distributed to those who can't afford it, they will know that Rotary is making a difference in their community. And it has, I know we've got several other groups within our Rotary district who are talking to Randy about doing a similar magazine in their community, and he may want to be able to add something to that. Absolutely. It, it was an interesting situation because it, really in the back of my mind, my focus was on Canal Valley. That was the goal, and I needed to get this thing put together, and, and through the help of, of so many other Rotarians, we, we made it happen. Uh, there was actually uh, an interesting visit, of, uh, you know, a Rotary makeup that uh, an incoming district governor did at the Westlake Noon Club, picked up the magazine and says, okay, where did this come from? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure this one out. So it was interesting how the word started to spread. I wasn't expecting that to happen quite so quickly. It was great that it did because that was my hope. And uh, as a result of that, there have been now five different groups that have asked Good. for presentations Good. to see if it's something that we can pull together for them. That's a great one. Uh, giving back Again, this is uh, part of your profession, correct? This is, yeah, this is but really what, what I do. do. <laughs> and, and, and really, um, over the 35 years of doing marketing, uh, my most fun times is when I had nonprofit organization and clients. That's really what I enjoy doing. Yeah. So if I can spend more time with just that, I'd be a really happy camper. <laughs> you know, Wade, I think the other message from the success of this magazine is while we all talk about web and social media, there is a role in community awareness for the print media. And the magazine, I think, is a testament to the success of bringing print media into the community. That's a good point. Very good point, because you are catching a completely separate group of people. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Effort-wise, how hard is this to put together there, Randy? It's time-consuming. It definitely is. You know, one of the things that I, I try to present to all the presidents of the various groups is that 
I know the last thing that you need is another project on your plates. <laughs> so what I offer is I say, look, we'll do all the work for you. All we need is for you to provide some bullet points on the things that you want in here to follow. You could follow the template if you want. Send us some high-res photos that we can use. And we'll do it all. We'll write it, edit it, uh, design it, get proofs over to you, get it printed, arrange for the distribution. We just we want to make it as, as uh, smooth flowing as we can. I would say that probably the most time consuming part is the fact that there are so many different people that we need to follow up with. And, and I mean, Rotarians are busy. They've got their careers going on as well as Rotary projects. So th that's mostly it, is just being able to, to keep that communication going. Got it. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. So you actually are doing this in-house then right now? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, thank you very much for what you do. That's outstanding. It's a good way to thank give you. back to not only the community, Rotary, but everybody benefits from that. It's so fun. Thank you. Thank it's you. Fun. Um, as you go through the next, I would say, issue, which would be maybe in six months then, how do you gather up and how do you select what, what are the priorities to put into print? I think what we want to do is allow each group to have uh, form its own personality of how this magazine is going to grow. One of the things we do know is there's an endless supply of information that comes from the world of Rotary on one level or another. So we can definitely do that. We can get all that in there. And we can create themes, uh, looking at it and saying, I'll tell you what, this next issue, we're going to focus on youth, and we're going to look at Ro RILA, Rotaract, Interact. Well, good. So we can, we can focus that way. Good. Now, is there a specific direction that you would try and go by setting an image for Rotary, or is it something that you're just going to go with what is being submitted? Have you thought about that? I, you know what? I, I think this is something that we'll think about as time progresses. Um, we're, I love the input that everybody brings. And when we'll get some really good idea from one group, I like bringing it to another and say, you know what? This is what they thought about. What, what do you guys think about doing that over here? So there's, that's one of the things. Rotarians are so innovative as it is. True. And we, we just get some great input, and it just takes on a life of its own. True, true. Now, have you thought about doing one where it would be all-inclusive, a larger one that would be district-wide? You know, not quite on this level. Um, okay. Perhaps there could be one that could happen um, every once in a while that just could be for other Rotarians. But one of the things that was, was important in my mind is that if I live in Newberry Park, which I do, and I see this magazine for the first time, and I pick it up, and the first thing I see is information about a Rotary Club in China Lake or Tehachapi, I may get the feeling True. this is not going to be part of my community. Good, good point. And so I thought, let's keep it in the groups. The groups are, are there's 12 different groups in the district, and they're, they're really organized in such a way that it, it, it appears to work in almost True. every case to be a community. It would, it would make sense that way. Yeah. Very good. Um, is there a possibility of re replicating some of the stories out? Have you, have you seen that? For example, somebody has a fundraiser. It may mm -hmm. be, in, be on country music. That would be kind of a template um, article, or would you just say, bring what you got? Well, I'd say that you just gave me a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I look at doing something like that. <laughs> You know, I wanted to mention that this, this truly is a, a membership recruitment tool. Sure. Um, when I joined Rotary 24 years ago, I was told there were 1.2 million members in, yeah. in Rotary. Yeah. And now here we are, 24 years later, and we have 1.2 million. And, the, and, and one would say, okay, that means we've gone flat. However, my understanding is that in the United States, we've actually gone down right. overall. So um, we tend to be the best kept secret. Rotarians don't want to pat themselves on the back and say, gee, look what we did. You know, we, we just like to do our thing and give back and have fun doing it. And this is just a way to be able to tell everyone, this is what's being done. We need more members. We know you're out there. We know there are people out there that want to give back and learn about Rotary. Very good. Now, part of the organization uh, of the newsletter itself, since it's going to be twice annually, are you working with the presidents on this, or do you have actually committees within each of these clubs that will be feeding you information? Well, that's, that's kind of growing as, as we go along as well. But what I'm recommending to everybody, because the presidents are usually pretty busy, yeah. but what I'm recommending is that they consider using their membership chairs as the one conduit back to us to supply information. 
because it can very easily be considered a membership committee True. project on their end. And, um, you know, or it could be the public image committee person as well. I was thinking about public image, too, being mm -hmm. one of the main ones. Um, they would be the ones aware of what uh, people would want to see. Right. Something like that. Yeah. Of all of the um, articles, issues, which one stands out most in your mind? Put you on a spot here. Well, to me, really, the feature does. Um, and, and I think that that's always going to be by design. You know, we, we want that feature story to be something that shows what it's like to have a group of clubs working together on something. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Uh, Pleasure. Outstanding project. Um, love seeing that one. Again, um, the magazine speaks for itself. What I do like is uh, Rotary Serving Our Community. I think uh, kind of replicates our show name, so I, I'm liking that a lot. Um, with that, thank you very much, everybody. Take a look at it, see what Rotary's doing, and see if, in fact, you see this magazine showing up in your area. With that, we will see you next time.